Um, I just want to see how well this is, how well this is picking up on audio, because I know that sometimes that camera can get loud, um, that camera's mic, so if I get, um, just let me get some settings figured out here, <clears throat> I don't want to blow your ears out, and I've been doing that to a lot of people. Okay, what's up everybody? There's been a lot of drawing streams lately and I don't want to say that I feel like I'm missing the boat, but there's been so much activity. I feel like, um, I mean, I have been working on this, but um, not really in front of everybody. So it's, it's been a little bit, uh, been a little bit different. So um, I'm working on a, well, I guess that this would be page two. Maybe I should write that down somewhere. I've been doing this to my uh, to my layout pages, but make it official. Asphalt issue one, page two, one. I don't even know what the date was. It's <laughs> it was like an entire slew of days. Um, just has a lot to do with the amount of time that I have to get to get down on this thing. So I hope I don't get too nervous being in front of all these fine people. I'm probably going to want to pull this up on my phone just in case anybody shows up. I can see it happening. And give me a second. Does it even say? I have to subscribe to myself. Yeah, there we go. Say, I have to subscribe. All right. Well, I guess the volume is working. So that way it'll be right in front of me. I can see if uh, anybody shows up. Okay, so what are we looking at? Um, <clears throat> this is... Uh, the story of a single father trying to find his lost daughter, um, and that is the the main <clears throat> the main crux of the story. I've been getting into this thing um, with a, some great help from from Julius Freeman at a Lucid Comic. Um, I did not consider myself, and and I'm I'm not going. I'm going to try to be. I'm. I want to be humble. I don't necessarily consider myself a writer per se. Um, I do have the. This is my idea. Um, <clears throat> just like all the ideas, you know. There's. I I guess like there's everything. Everything is inspired by something else. So, um, I try to make the. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I try to make the inspiration uh, less noticeable and maybe that there's uh, so many, uh, so, so much of it's from so many different areas that it actually hides itself well enough, but <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so I get home around uh, uh, two o'clock if nothing goes wrong uh, whenever I'm working this this late shift and Although I'm not supposed to, I do see um, and get a chance to listen to some streams. <clears throat> Man, I don't know what's going on with my voice. As soon as I turn the camera on, I get all phlegmy. So <clears throat> this is the story of a... I've decided, and, and, and who knows if this is going to change because... Uh, some things are still solid, and some things are still <clears throat> fluid. Man. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I feel like I'm going to hock a loogie up right on this page. So I'm going to throw out some names, and hopefully they will uh, stay the same. Um, this is uh, 
Shane McCabe. Uh, he is a, uh, a guy who basically likes to be left alone to do his own thing. Uh, he is a motorhead. He is a gearhead. Um, the idea behind this book is what would somebody do um, if they had uh, none of the money to be a Batman, but all of the skill to make their own stuff? Uh, so this is kind of like, I guess you'd say like a, a blue collar Batman or blue collar Iron Man. And that if uh, somebody was uh, so inclined to uh, take on the role of a, <clears throat> of a vigilante, <clears throat> Um, and, and actually pull it off, uh, they would not be able to do it on their own. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to say this, like speaking from personal experience, but, um, I am so hyper aware of the amount of time that I don't have to do the stuff that I want to do. I can't imagine somebody being able to, you know, do all the work that they have to during the day to support themselves, uh, and go, um, looking for missing children and, and kicking ass with without a team. And that is uh, precisely what uh, is, is, is what these uh, other characters are. Um, it, it revolves around a club of like-minded people. Um, and they, uh, and they all have the one thing in common is their, uh, their love of uh, automobiles. Uh, they come from different walks of life, but in the same way that uh, Bruce Wayne might have his his backstory, uh, uh, you saw your parents get killed, and now um, you are a uh, suffering from some sort of a neuroses that makes you want to dress up like a bat and um, go out and do terrible things to people who deserve it. Uh, each one of the characters in this book <clears throat> has suffered some sort of a similar, um, I'll say a, a similar fate, but a similar experience. And, uh, and, and they all, um, they all have that in common. So, <clears throat> good Lord, all I did was drink some tea and now all of a sudden I'm hocking up loogies. Uh, there was a movie with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, Sally Field, and it will come to me. Um, it will, probably won't come to me because uh, I'm trying to think of it. And since nobody's in the chat right now, I'm not going to get any help. But uh, it Ed Harris is in it. Uh, her, her one daughter gets... Yeah. Well, it looks like a bot. I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I can't think of it because I'm talking about it. Somebody else was talking about it. I come up with it right away. But her one daughter gets um, raped. There's no, you know, the justice system breaks down, and similar things happen to um, to to these friends of Shane and Shane, and they all <clears throat> agree uh, to help each other. And, um, and that includes uh, hiding, that includes the uh, tech, that includes, um, you know, we've got different, different characters working in conjunction that you would need to have on your side. Like, you know, it's great to have a doctor in the family. It's great to have a mechanic in the family. It's great to have a lawyer in the family. It's great to have you know, just like that, uh, except for it's on this team. <clears throat> and uh, issue one is going to be, of course, it's going to be an, an origin story. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, we got to get to know our, our characters and, and, and what happens. So um, without giving anything away, but uh, the premise I can give away. Um there are a bunch of different characters besides Shane McCabe here. 
he is uh out of out of all the characters in the book he is the one who possesses the uh the fighting skill um he is i wouldn't necessarily call him uh i mean for all intents and purposes uh, an alpha but also a um he's he's gonna be the, the the hothead he's got he's the one he has the most at stake presently our other characters are um <clears throat> have have suffered similar loss uh that he has not suffered any loss yet his you know his girl is out there somewhere and he's got to find her um one of the things that i always remember um uh, that I, you had to give up to movies like star wars and uh, dune you know movies and books is that your good guy always looks way way better and you cheer for him louder when the bad guy is really bad and uh our bad guys are are bad uh they are the type of people that uh if if you met one in the street and you knew what they had done you would um reflexively cut their balls off so that they couldn't hurt anyone else and um that's the that's the type of people that we're dealing with it's the type of people that uh, that he's fighting uh, there's and it's there's it's it's a mystery story um you know one of the things that i i don't want to say that i'm worried about it i believe that i can do it but it, it is a, for for me never having written anything or, or told a story i do feel like it's a little ambitious because um it's got a lot of moving parts um at least right now it feels like it's got a lot of moving parts no i'm actually wondering if i mean this page is going to end up being like super uh, super dark the only thing that's lighting anything on this page is this floating cell phone right here oh you know what i think i've got the automatic focus on this thing give me one second i'm going to fix that Sorry about that. Um, I had to reboot the computer. It was not seeing the camera, but it was hearing the camera. So <clears throat> one of the things I can't do is unplug the camera and plug it back in. So uh, every time I do that, it goes back to default settings. So so um, traditional inking. Uh, I've I've never actually. Uh, I've never I've never done this before. Um, I'm tr- I'm trying to keep in mind. And again, this is this is more of that. Um, I might be um, I might be too ambitious on this. Um, what I need is a dedicated paintbrush because all of these bricks here are going to be. You know what we're looking at is that there's a a spotlight over this door and the did i just lock up now what the hell Sorry, guys. I can't believe this. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on.
you kidding me? Let's see. All right. <clears throat> I don't even, yeah. Okay. So I guess you guys can hear me. I'm going to end up stopping this shit and coming back in because uh, if the camera locked up, whatever. I'm going to have to reboot. So.
Wow. Okay. What a pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Shit. I don't even know why I bothered, you know. <laughs> I can see, I can see my arms waving around and stuff. So looks like it's actually working. Can you believe it? But I know, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't going to be showing up at two whatever a.m. That's fine. I still need to practice talking to nobody. What am I doing? I'll do some uh, I'll do some technical stuff here. There's the eight. Go with three. Maybe add some texture to this door. But I've got uh, basically, you know, I've got a shop light or a or a spotlight on this door that's being <clears throat> uh, taken out by one of these uh, hooks. This is um. Did I even say what the name of the book is? Because I know that's solid. That's not changing. The name of the book is Asphalt. As in the street. Um, and that is one of the reasons. is Because it, in, it is because there's cars involved. Um, and we're not talking about like supercars. We're just talking about decent. Um, <clears throat> like if you've ever been to a, you know, a car show or car cruise or a car club. Like, you know, decent cars. Nothing like you see modern day that's been, you know, designed to look like a, a bubble. You know, everything that just, you know, went to all the design and stuff went to crap. And, you know, Ford tried to bring it back with the Mustang in 05. And then uh, Chrysler started following suit. But <clears throat> it's still not the same, you know, powerful, you know, back end you know, posi traction, differential, you know, big fat tires, like a nice powerful back end and uh, you know, drag tires and blowing people's doors off and, you know, shit like that. Um, I want to bring some of that in. <clears throat> and to that end, um, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> which is, again, it's, it's going to take some time, is <clears throat> I have to keep certain things around for reference. One of the characters um, drives one of these 32 Fords with a rumble seat. And that rumble seat, that's that uh, trunk that you open up and there's extra seating in the back. That's, uh, that's vital to the to the story. How do I do this? There. Okay. I don't know. Bots. That's great. That's what you get. Something in the morning. And two something in the morning. You get bots. So. For instance, um. We have a we have an IT specialist, and um, that is that that 32 Ford is our IT specialist car, and uh, there is a mobile communications array in the rumble seat, and we're talking about like being able to you know hook up to satellites and communicate with with our hero anywhere uh, because. What's behind and underneath this helmet, <clears throat> where it looks like it looks like he can't see, uh, because you know it is a, basically a big steel plate over a big, uh, basically like a, a aluminum uh, helmet. But there's stuff going on on the inside, um, and it's it is a uh, you know it's not a technological wonder or whatever but i wanted to write this character as if there were 
technological possibilities. Um, I'm not trying to be uh, realistic by any sense of the uh, word, but I do want to to write it as though somebody would, you know, actually scratch their chin and go, you know what, I wonder if something like this is actually possible. Uh, you know, it's it, it will there will be, you know, like we won't say like a like a uh, an Oculus in there, but something uh, something like it. Uh, our guy and his friends are going to have to be on the, you know, the cutting edge of, of some things. And uh, technology technology is going to be one of them. So anyways, uh, if anybody's interested, when I first started inking with a, a brush and filling in big dark, bigger, darker areas, I was using this Higgins Black Magic, and uh, I found it to be a little bit watery. So um, uh, I did a little bit of research online and found that um, a lot of people really dig this Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star High Carb ink. And um, it has got, it's got a decent amount of body to it. Uh, I like it. And um, so that's what I'm going to be. I just want to fill in some dark areas here. Uh, um, and, and again... Uh, just in case, um, I don't know if I glossed over it or not. And I, I know I have a tendency to go off on tangents. You know, what's weird is you're 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 actually listening to somebody who's going off on a tangent about going off on a tangent. It's sort of like just a, a little bit of a, a warning for you. But uh, to all my new subscribers and my old subscribers, um, I'm going to do my best to try to just uh, uh, carry on and muscle through. Um, you know, practice makes perfect. We learn by doing, to quote Captain Kirk from the Wrath of Khan when he stepped onto the turbo lift and was trying to explain the concept of humor to Lieutenant Savick. <clears throat> yeah, it's like that. Um, yeah, I mean, if if my first two panels is this guy knocking out the lights, then am I not, um, quote unquote, painting myself into a conceptual corner where he's not going to be that easily seen because isn't that the point? Um, we are outside, so there is going to be some ambient light from somewhere. We're at the end of an alley. Um, the only light that's really being, that's coming off of anybody's coming off of this uh, cell phone, and we know how dim those can be, but, you know, the reader still has to be able to see stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself, you know, like, well, where do I... <laughs> You know where do I go from there? Like where's the uh, you know where's the cutoff? And um, you know who knows? <clears throat> uh, how dark do I make this versus that? And you know, just, am I using hatching or uh, cross hatching? And you know, it's uh, all of this is so it's it's so new to me. Um, and and like a lot of people doing their doing their first book. It's something that I've always wanted to do, uh, and I know that I've talked about this in the past, but um, for all of you new subscribers who have not uh, heard the, the tale, um, but my art career was concentrated for the last uh, 20 years in uh, custom paint and uh, airbrush. In fact, I've got, a, I've got a project in the next room. I have no idea why I said yes to it. Um, as I got my start in airbrush working at uh, uh, doing t-shirts and uh, amusement parks, malls, you know, things like that. And then um, somebody brought me a motorcycle tank and I ended up getting into for the longest time doing automotive airbrush with urethanes. And then even beyond that, um, the real heavy duty spray booth. Um, you know, primers making, you know, like, I, I, I feel like I get into this story every single time and I get into it at length, but since nobody's listening, it doesn't matter right now. I appreciate the ones who are going to be listening later. Um, you know, but when you paint something, if you've ever seen um, an artist like uh, Drew Struzan uh, prep a board, um, 
Do I go straight up black on these bricks? I'm gonna, gonna continue with the figure here. Um, they will get down on that thing with some gesso and prep it if it's watercolors, it's watercolor paper. Uh, then you're going to be, um, you know, actually wetting that paper and then letting it dry out. Uh, there's, you know, there's a specific way that you prep this stuff. Uh, when you paint a car, how do I get rid of these? How do I get rid of bots? Is it just the time of day that I'm... time of day that I'm streaming but when you paint a car um, you know you got to prep the metal you got to put the primer down and this is all like you know caustic material or it, it's all solvent based so you know you got to have protective equipment you know spray mask a um, suit you know a booth um, I've actually got it all laid down on my on my website um, for the people who actually still want me to do custom paint. Um, I want to get away from it so bad I'm willing to charge um, extravagant prices until, you know, the only people that say yes are the people who are, who are desperate. Because, uh, you know, do I need the money? Yeah, sure. I mean, I got my full-time job and that's great. But, uh, I don't want to you know, turn it down. I mean, they are expensive. Anyways, the whole point is this. <clears throat> it's just, uh, you know, by the time I by, by the time I got into like doing clear coats and show finishes and sanding things so that they were smooth as glass, uh, which is the real difference. You know, you you got to make sure that you're using urethanes and enamels or, you know, you are part chemist, part sign painter because you work with gold leaf you're and, and pinstriping and lettering. Um, you have to know which materials can go over which, or you will literally ruin it just by putting a finishing clear coat on it if you do it the wrong way. Um, things will flow and drag and sag. They will wrinkle. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, then there are some uh, you know videos on this channel of me doing that kind of work. Uh, this is a comic artist evolution stream, so... Um, which is basically about, you know, me learning about this process, uh, you know, from the people who are the, you know, the professionals that, um, you know, those, those guys that, uh, you know, they stream and they do it every, they do it every day and they're, and they're, they're making books and, um, you know, having the time of their life. And uh, which brings me to why I want to do this. It's it's not because I think they're having more fun than me. It's because this is something that I was I wanted to do when I was a kid, and it was hard for me to get into, um, <clears throat> based on the environment that I was in while it was happening. Uh, I wanted to get into comic books, and it was just not easy to. Uh, it was not an easy thing to do with the uh, the house that I grew up in. So when I finally moved out. Um, and I got into airbrush. It just, you know, I mean, I was just, I was, I was on that 20 foot wave, <clears throat> uh, for years. And until I'd seen, I'll, I'll just tell you right now. Um, I was watching a, um, I was watching, uh, I have no idea how I tripped over these things at you boy. Yeah. You know, every once in a while, the, uh, you know, the YouTube algorithm gets it right. And I'm watching this guy who's just natural on the phone or on the phone, um, doing his videos, you know, from his car and crumpling up uh, comic books and, uh, naturally funny. And, um, you know, when he started talking about doing his own comic books that just led even further down the rabbit hole to watching, uh, guys like John Malin and EVS. And, um, you know, these guys are professionals and I had been out of comic books for so long. I honest to God, I'll, I'll just come right out and say it. I didn't know who they were. I was still, you know, into like, you know, um, John Byrne, Bernie Wrights, and, you know, those names from, uh, from the eighties, um, you know, the titles that I was listening or listening to watch or reading were, um, I liked Excalibur cause I really liked, um, Alan Davis and Paul Neary. I liked, uh, they, they, they seem to have a real, I just, I don't know what it was about their, um, 
the way that they 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 did their figures. Um, I really like that team. Um, what else was there? And it was a real unique one is uh, Generation X. Um, I didn't. It, it took me a while. It's sort of like some of my favorite bands are the ones that you listen to, you know, three or four times, and then you finally, uh, it, you know, something finally clicks, and you're just like, oh yeah, man, this is this is totally it. This this is uh, this is just the best stuff in the world. And if I had another computer here, I'd look it up. Um, if, if Scott Lobdell wasn't the writer, he was the artist. That's the name that keeps popping out. <clears throat> Um, but I like those characters in that storyline. And that was more of a, like a late 80s, early early 90s uh, thing. So long story short, um, I think there was something about, for some reason, drawing comic books was more intimidating to me than than doing all of the other, like the automotive airbrush stuff that I was just, was just talking about. And I think part of it was that, um, as long as I was learning something new, uh, I was going to have to face, um, what I would consider to be a, a, a more intimidating art form. But the more I ended up doing work for other people who, um, regardless of how nice they are. And I have, I have some great customers. I have, um, I have customers that have become like really good friends. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. And it's not the kind of thing that I seek out. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so, um, but regardless of that, um, it is really hard, no matter how good you are at doing airbrush illustration and all of the things that I, that I learned how to do, there is no way to get around the fact that you are always doing somebody else's thing. You're never doing your own thing. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> and I think I, I had to get around uh, past the idea that, um, like, I took a lot of pride in in the idea that my art form that I was doing that wasn't comics was more challenging because it was on metal and it was curved and it needed to have all of this stuff and and. Uh, there was always a you know a different uh, technique to like doing, uh, you know, working that real fire texture and lightning bolts and and um, flake effects and taping stuff out, doing low rider paint jobs. That even the like, it's it's very like. I am proud that I know how to do that stuff, um, but there is something beyond just, you know, being proud of your ability. Great. Um, you know how to do that. Uh, that's awesome. But is that what you're supposed to be doing? You know, and, you know, um, after a while, I just, I, I would, I would use this stupid excuse like, um, yeah, well, um, if I quit doing, you know, custom paint, then I'm going to be like disappointing people and completely disregarding the fact that I'm literally disappointing myself by continuing to do it, you know, and there's, there's, there's a lot that, of there's a lot of equipment, um, I've, I've invested in, um, that I am, I, at least the shop space that I was renting from, I have divested myself from that. I've, um, <clears throat> I've, um, let my business insurance go because I'm not holding anything of, of value that belongs to anybody else that wouldn't be covered in, in my homeowners. Because any of that artwork I do, I do from here. Um, um, you know, there's just, there's a, there's a lot of, of money invested in equipment. Um, and a lot of time and energy getting good at that. 
Uh, that doesn't mean that I, you know, I won't ever do it again. Um, you know, there's there's a, a panel that I'm working on. I've, I've created tools for the industry uh, that I still sell uh, on PayPal. I've 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 done a, my my share of of innovation and uh, you know the tools that I sell to pinstripers and uh, people that do gold leaf too specifically two tools specifically and um, and I want to keep doing that because it's uh I, it, I don't want to say it's like easy money I just have to market it better and, and get it out there but it's still not the thing that I you know feel that I it's not a need this is a need this is this feels different um you know i i feel like i'm actually um you know if, if i don't do this that i'm i'm breaking some sort of a promise to myself you know that uh you know that i made to myself when i was a kid and um anyways so <clears throat> speaking of kids uh this guy right here this single father his um the, the the mother of his child passed away and uh passed away in, in childbirth and that little girl is all he's got um she goes missing and um it doesn't seem like anybody's really doing anything about it so he has to take it upon himself to find out what happened. Um, now, uh, how she was taken, it was honest to, um, it was honestly just like a, 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 a crime of opportunity. Something else was happening. Somebody else was being, uh, was, was, uh, having some bad guys visited upon them and, uh, and she got taken in the mix. Um, and uh, apparently, see, it's it's like when you have a Batman and uh, and you have your mom and dad uh, murdered in front of you. Uh, yeah, that can be traumatic. And now you've got all the money in the world to uh, to make these gadgets. Um, when this story comes out. Um, I think the readers are going to be uh, more or less like, oh, yeah, uh, having a day like that would make anybody snap. And um, and it is it is just uh, we're not talking about just having your having I shouldn't say like just having your parents murdered in front of you. That is pretty bad. Um, <clears throat> but this is a this is just the, the, the worst day in the world uh, visited upon somebody. And, um, he, you know, he's not relying on his friends at first because he doesn't want to see any of them get hurt, but he, uh, he is, he is forced to because, well, for crying out loud, um, you cannot do something that he's about to do. I'm just doing this to get some sort of a idea on uh where where my light might hit this is a really loose interpretation but um i'm starting off with some action i'm gonna start off with some action and then we're gonna go into the story and uh tell you how we got to here I, I do want to keep doing these live streams, though. I mean, it's like it's very nice and effective. Yeah, I got a lot of got a lot of bots. Is this the right pen? I think I got the. I want the eight. I want the three. Um, I think I'm working on a 1911 here, but, um, I can't be, uh, for certain. Yeah. Um, it wants to be a 1911. It might not be, uh, completely and totally, but, um, 
because I don't own one, uh, or I would have it sitting out in front of me as a model. I was I was using a you know just a, a picture reference off of uh, off the internet for this for that gun. So, um, yeah, I was like, comic books is something that I was, I was into. I used to enjoy it a lot more than, um, I don't, I'm not going to say I used to enjoy it a lot more than I do now. I had the time to enjoy it a lot more than I do now. Like right now I've got a one, two, three. I mean, there's two, two stacks literally about this tall, uh, one right next to the other. Uh, plus some other stuff, uh, you know, comic skate stuff that I've I've backed and I have not been able to uh, to get to. In fact, how about this real quick? Just an impromptu. Okay, this this was from Alterna a while ago, and I still have to get into this. I read the other one that uh, uh, what was the other one that came in that I read? I still have to read Star Blades. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. What was that one? Scrimshaw. This was good. I like that. Um, we'll do a little unboxing here. This came in. My uh did I seriously leave my exacto in the other room? Expendables go to hell. Really looking forward to this. That's great on the front. Dorman. I'm going to have to look into him even uh, a little bit more. I do not want to use the knife on this plastic. Looks like I'm going to, though. Just to get it started. And so here's another book I need to read. Um... I, I mean, and now I'm still going to the local comic book shop to fill in all the holes um, from uh, my own collection. Yeah, got the two posters. I'm not going to open those up yet. I'm just going to, and it'll just end up making me even more disorganized. And what else came in? A regular comic bag. And it's another thing I got to get. I got to get pages for the, um, is this open at the bottom? I got to get pages for the, uh, that, that collector's album. I've never collected cards before, but there's always like two or three in every one of these packages. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this is great stuff. I mean, this is now that's got to be Aaron L. Fetchy. That's I the way that he does his his faces. That's almost unmistakable. I I'd, I'd be I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I'm gonna have to look into that. Um. <clears throat> so. Yeah. Now, you tell me if you think this is cheap or not, but I like to um, save my old Gemini mailers because I'm going to need them someday. I just got to get all the old labels off of them. So it comes back around. Thank you, Richard C. Meyer, for sending me that great book. Uh, there's another one up here. I might as well unbox it. Oh yeah, this has got to be Ultra Star. Now, admittedly, um, and I've, I've got to get on to because I know it's only been up for like four days. I got to get on to um, Riot Press's uh, Johnny Phantasm. I got 1985. I did a review of it. I'm gonna have to revisit that one because I remember I remember reading it and thinking I just that I didn't quite get it, but it's not something that I. It's not. It's. It, it deserves more than one. Uh, it deserves more than one go around. I love this. is great. And what a cool costume design too. Like who has the balls to go just straight up black, and then and then put all the interesting stuff about the costume on the sides, and and not in in the in the front. 
you know. But that's a good, uh, it's a good color combination if you're from Pittsburgh. Yep. Oh. Yeah. All the kits uh, or the, uh, was it the tchotchkes? Buy full color trading cards. Yeah, this looks great. And then uh, I think this is what are we looking at? Yeah, yeah, the art by Patrick. Now the last um, the the last Johnny Phantasm that I read, some of it looked like this, and some of it was like another artist, which is understandable. I mean, you got to get the stuff out. Um, I it, to to me it was a it wasn't a huge jump. I did enjoy seeing the different styles and stuff, but I do like the consistency of uh, of seeing one artist all the way through. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, Patrick's got a really unique style. It's and and it's not necessarily um, it's not necessarily up my alley, but neither was. Um, neither was Generation X the first time I started reading it. It was it it, it was something that I ended up getting getting used to because uh, and the thing that I liked about it was that I wasn't looking at muscle bound um, freaks. There's a place for that, and not every superhero has to look like you know they step right out of pumping iron. Um, and that was the charm that I, that I saw in that. And, and I know that, um, I just like, I like being able to recognize that it was his stuff before I saw him, his name in the credits. So there are two birds with one stone, some drawing, some unboxing. <clears throat> anyway, so, so this is a glove. I just kind of got used to wearing, um, when you're working on. Uh, cars and clear finishes and stuff while you're you're pinstriping it's um it keeps you from getting your finger oils and stuff all over all over the car now i don't know if or the surface of what you're painting which is usually a car and i don't know if the the glove is going to act as some sort of a a blending stick or have uh, the effect of like smearing pencil and stuff all over the place but um, and I feel more comfortable with it on. And these things are from Uline. You know, you get a dozen of them for a couple of bucks, and you just take a pair of scissors and you cut the thumb and the the first finger off, and Bob's your uncle. So yeah, 2 a.m. I'm gonna. I, I want to try doing one of these things on the uh, on a Saturday, and maybe I should fund some kind of a shopping trip. I can get my wife to take her friends. They can go out and uh, pig out at a sushi restaurant and roll on over to buy shoes or something like that. And, I don't know how many people use these things, these rolling rulers, but uh, the one thing that I do like about them, regardless of whether the wheels are on them, is just being able to pick it up uh, easy. You know, sometimes, you know, you get a ruler that falls uh, flat onto the page and you have to sit there and like pick at it with your fingers so that it'll, it'll actually come up off the surface. You can pick it up and move it around. But, um... This one, I had, I, I got see these cheap ones before, like the wheels were all wonky and it didn't want to, it, it didn't want to roll and um, it was like, like a hot wheel with bent wheels, piece of shit, threw both of them out. Sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay your money to get your qualities. All right, let's see if I can get this hand right. Something there's there's something about the way his 
I can't actually hold a, a, a gun on stream or I would. But this will this will work. Uh, this is a uh, <laughs> it's a vacuum cleaner. Um, whenever I'm doing the gold leaf, um, the, it, you you got to get rid of the excess. A lot of the stuff it just gets everywhere. It's really just for your keyboard. But um, while I'm while I'm uh, doing gold leaf work, uh, I just use this so that I can keep it from getting everywhere as I as I as I work on the project. Because it will. I mean, it'll it'll just all of a sudden there'll just be gold all over the desk and something not really real gold, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it's you know twenty four karat gold depends. Uh, Alvin EE one seventy five electric eraser. I've had that ever since uh, college. Uh, the little plastic ring here broke off. Fun fact, this is actually a cheap earring that I twisted on there with a pair of pliers, and it's stayed ever since. Um, uh, well, yeah, that used to be in my ear. It is no longer. Yeah, see, I want to have this. This is um, something that uh, I was in the, I was in, uh, in the chat on uh, Noah's stream earlier, that 16-year-old wunderkind there. And um, I was asking him what about his influences, and he said, uh, Bernie Wrightson. And, and one of the things I loved about Bernie Wrights and stuff is um, his – do I have a book of his up here? I should. Um, the way that he did, did his hands, he exaggerated. Any any time there was a hand holding on to a pole uh, or something like that there um, – oh, Right, they're down here. No, oh, and yeah, signed. Okay, there's that knuckle. I just love the way these hands are positioned. I love the way he does hands, and and a lot of his um, his inking and stuff with the. He's just a master uh, inking with a brush. Look at this. I mean, you know, you try that. His hands are always so expressive. Um, there's one. Is it in this book? Might be in this one. This is a perfect example. Here, here, um, something that's just whatever. It's, uh, it's Bernie. And you take a little bit from this guy, take a little bit from that guy. Um, you know, I want to, uh, you know, hands from uh, Bernie and women's asses from Frazetta. And that's, uh, I, I wouldn't even say that's subjective. I think that I think everybody. And um, if you don't think, if you don't think that's that's right, then you're wrong. Women's asses should always look like Frazetta's ass. Frazetta's asses for those women's asses. That, that uh, just like just like those those old muscle cars from the '70s, man. You want to have that power in the back end. And uh, Frazetta's women always had a lot of power in the back end. So, yeah, there's going to be, um, I mean, there may be some changes to the, that this lighting is doing. Is, happens um i had actually put a bunch of texture in this brick up here before i decided it just it wasn't dark enough so um 
I might go in and, and uh, change stuff. What other, what I don't want to necessarily do is um, change too much in the computer. Page one. Um, I had to do some necessary stuff in here um, because I wanted this to look more like a, a computer screen. And um, I don't know if that had more to do with... Um, I think it had a lot more to do with that, that I, I hadn't necessarily planned ahead well enough in my layouts. And um, I don't know, I'm like, I'm constantly going over the story. I'm constantly, like I was asking a, the question openly. No, I think I was talking to Julius that um, there are things that are happening in the story that the reader can read. They can see it and they can, they can see what's going on. Um, some of the actions of the bad guys, like I want to explain how it is that any of this is happening as if it could happen in the, in, in the real world, for instance, you know, how can a uh, character A, B, and C not get away with everything that character, um, D is, um, and, um, and, and I feel like I need to, to explain that. Because it, I mean, it's a legitimate, you know, legitimate question for me. Like, if you know, if they're just bodies dropping all over the place, then how come this guy is still alive? Um, and I, I keep referencing this, although I don't think that um, I don't think that Julius knows what I'm talking about when I say it. But all you have to do is see one of these movies, and you'll and you'll know what I mean. Um, and they are they're they're kind of hard to get through if you don't know why you're you're watching them but uh, a neil brain movie um i am i'm hyper aware that i've never written anything before um and uh th that there is a certain bias that comes with you know writing your own story um for instance i remember a long long time ago um my uh, older sister five years older than me and uh, she's you know she's the person that got me into comic books in the very beginning and um, um there was a role-playing game that she would play with her friends of course not at the house because that would have been verboten uh, don't you realize that all role-playing games are a one-way ticket to hell uh and uh, but she had this you know character that she made up at the time that the character's name was Vixen had nothing to do with uh, with with anything current. In fact, I remember um, one of my earliest characters when I was a kid was named Black Bolt. And when I went and got my uh, official handbook of the Marvel Universe, and I was opening the pages and stuff, and I ran across a Black Bolt there. Um, and I'm like, but this guy doesn't have anything to do with electricity or anything like that. I mean, who is Black Agar Boltagon? I mean, that's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life. And I was just like, oh, man, I had this great idea and somebody stole it. And, you know, whatever. I was a kid. I didn't uh, I didn't really even know how any of that stuff worked. But um, she had this character called Vixen. And, um, you know, with her group of uh, role-playing friends, um, you know, they did their, their story or, or whatever their, they did their, their module. Um, and she decided to write a story about that team. And, uh, she said the funny thing was, and that she didn't even realize that she was doing it was that, um, um, uh, because she was writing a story about her character and she had this inherent bias where her character was doing all of the heavy lifting. She was the smartest one. She was she was written as the smartest person there. Um, she was the one that was taking all the risks. Um, everything was working out right for her, and um, didn't realize that she was basically a you know writing a her 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 character as a, as a Mary Sue. I have no idea what I'm doing with this uh, with this arm musculature. If even I where this light is coming from, but um, so far. So far, so good. I got to, you know, it's one of the things that I need, I know I need to do for myself is, um, um, yes, I want to, you know, challenge myself and make sure that I'm, um, I'm doing the best work that I can, but I also don't want to be too hard on myself. Otherwise it'll never get done. So, um, um, I, I know I have to keep plugging away. Um, one of my good friends up here, Jeff, 
is a storyboard artist. He's and he's doing this stuff like, you know, on on the daily. You know, knocking. He's he, his his gears do not have time to build up rust. He's just an art machine, uh, day in and day out. Does uh, storyboards, you know. And um, you know, we were talking about you know this project. And, um, you know, I was having some like misgivings about my first page because, you, you know, you can't do that to yourself. You just have to keep going on. Um, keep doing it. Um, your your first, you know, there's uh, like Da Vinci said, there's no uh, paintings are never finished. They're only ever abandoned. Um, I know that I'm going to be coming back and seeing that I didn't I don't like what I just did there you know and um you know how do I cover that up do I put more lines here or you know do I uh, just you know cover it in black and hopefully the person who's reading it doesn't notice you know that I'm uh um you know that I'm that I'm cheating you know or whatever um but I don't want to do that uh with you know my story either um i'm hyper aware that i've never written stories before and but at the same time you know i don't want that to keep me from having the story go forward i just want it to be uh believable and um you know doing as much research on the subject as possible you know like there is a law enforcement aspect to this book um our main hero our main character here meat hook is not a cop <clears throat> um but he's been around them um you know one of the dynamics of his story is that um he had been in a lot of trouble um you know he, he came up in a, in a in a not the greatest family environment um was a you know talented wrestler in high school you know state championship level in fact <clears throat> Just some history on the costume here. That this getup that he has on is in actuality a. Oh, I think I dropped the line here, brothers and sisters. That he is in actuality wearing a replica of a Harry Houdini's straitjacket. Now, <clears throat> it'll come out in later issues. For those people who are going to watch the stream later, um, that his, you know, now deceased wife um, was uh, one of the last things that they that uh, they did together. Um, that they was just like they just loved their their Halloween parties, and that Houdini is a nickname that he picked up. Because um, in wrestling, and I've never, I, I only know this because of the little bit that I did in like high school class. I didn't, I didn't wrestle. I wasn't, I wasn't one of those guys. Um, but I knew a lot of them. But in wrestling, you know, you can take a, get a point for a takedown. Um, but one of the things that you uh, can get two points for is for a reversal. And that's basically, you're in a situation where, you know, you could be, uh, pinned, you're in a hold, and uh, you manage to just switch things around. Um, you know, you do a little twisty turning here, grab that, twist that, pull here, yank there, and uh, before you know it, now you've now you've gained the upper hand. And that just this one little maneuver is uh, something that uh, you know Shane would tend to just so you call it specialize in. Or um, just found himself in almost like a domino kind of a way where he was just, you know, skilled enough and, and, and maybe even, you know, use it against his opponents to where you think you've got them. And then, you know, lo and behold, um, you are now the guy on the bottom getting pinned. Reversal, two points. Uh, you do that enough, and uh, you basically start to look like an escape artist. So he ends up, you know, gaining this notoriety just as, you know, that's the guy. You don't want to think that you've got him because there'll be a reversal. It'll be, reversal will be two points, whatever. So um, his girlfriend, and uh, they end up 
going to a Halloween party as a uh, mad scientist and a lunatic in an asylum. And it's this jacket is part of his Halloween costume. And uh, when things start to go south um, on that, that, that most terrible of days, uh, the uh, catalyzing event um, uh, he uh, he eventually turns this into you know part of the part of the get up. It's a small detail that's gonna end up coming out like later. I don't mind telling you people now and it is it's it's like a it's a little thing but um, you know, I spent so much time thinking about this story and, you know, why would somebody do something like that? Uh, you know, why would they wear that? And, um, and, the, and the reason why is because, um, you know, there are just certain things that are inherently uh, scary to people. And seeing somebody who looks like they just got out of an insane asylum is one of those things. Um, you know, he's got some protective wear on, but, and, and, and the whole point of like in this book here is in, in this, I don't want to say universe, but in this world is to the extent that there are superpowers. Um, I thought that it, it would be more interesting and more intriguing if they were, Um, I'm going to say if they were more of the unbreakable uh, variety. Okay. So in other words, <clears throat> one of the things that I liked about that, that movie, and I've heard people say that, you know, before one of, that, that unbreakable is one of the great superhero movies um, in existence uh, because of its plausibility. Now, I'm not going to go in, say that same thing about split uh or glass no well split maybe um but when they bring glass and when when that in that movie when it comes to its culmination i just did not like that as much as i as, as i liked unbreakable <clears throat> so that um you know the existence of superpowers are may be a thing but i'm sure they would not be thought of as superpowers because they're not super they're just like above average you know if you've got somebody who is a charles xavier type um they're not going to be outright freezing time um kind of uh you know mental powers they're just going to be influential above and beyond a um, a Tony Robbins. Uh, so in other words, um, there are people who are highly influential and then there are people who are not easily influenced. People who are not easily influenced might be influenced by somebody who's got this advantage. And I might even call it, just call it that, you know, these are advantaged people you know um you know enhanced i've heard that before but that's a little too on the nose you know um it's you know it kind of makes it sound like i want to turn the volume down on the whole superhero thing i just don't want it to take away from the believability of uh, of something uh, like this so anyways, I decided to make my bad guy a uh, motorcycle club, dude. And I still don't know exactly how it is I'm going to be, uh, you know, coloring this in. Because if there's going to be ambient light coming in from the street, like how much, you know, if I do any grays or... I mean, I don't want to color it digitally. I don't know if this is going to be in color right now. I'm just concentrating on the stuff that I can do now, like this part here that just, it just feels good right now to do this. Kind of, 
kind of indicate a, a deltoid there. And I know there's a lot of stuff I need to work on, like the way the way that fabric uh, moves around. And uh, I've got a whole shelf full of books, and a lot of times I treat them like good luck charms. Um, but I don't want to spend an entire stream just like looking through shit for uh, for the right reference. Although I do think it's important to build one of these this is you know if you don't feel like going out and getting a bunch of books um i don't even remember where i found this somebody colored in the uh colored in the guy's junk that might have even been me i'm not sure um, but this is all, this is, this is stuff that I found online from a wizard magazine. Somebody had posted it up there and I love, uh, these are all, you know, great. This is, you're exactly uh, doing fabric. You know, I see something that up there that's, you know, good reference material for wings, bat wings. Um, but I was also, I was also using this for. You know, reference material for stuff that I was doing on, you know, on bikes too. You know, people are always looking for a Grim Reaper, so you're always looking online for, you know, how do those bones look when they're pointed at you? You know. So, what time are we at here? Three thirty-seven. Yeah, I'll probably bail here, but um, I don't know. Oh shit! Hey, Latin. How long have you been there? Yeah, yeah. Um, that is true, Latin. Uh, see, I have to go over to my computer to highlight that. So I'm not going <laughs> to. Maybe I'll next time I do this, I'll get my iPad uh, going. But Latin, if you are into really good hand-drawn cell, cell animation for movies that aren't Disney. Um, and stop me if you heard these titles. Rock and Roll. That's uh, Rock and Roll. That's R-U-L-E. It's a Canadian movie. Really well done. as done in the 80s. This great soundtrack. Debbie Harry, Cheap Trick, uh, Iggy Pop, uh, Lou Reed. Uh, very imaginative, very original. Uh, if you want, ever, ever wanted to see a moving Frazetta painting, you get uh, Fire and Ice. Hey, how's it been going? So... Yeah, man, I appreciate anybody showing up just now because uh, that's uh, Jason Black. Um, like I said, the computer's on the other side of the room. I'm, I'm only seeing you guys chatting here because I am, uh, I've got the phone right in front of me. Uh, I haven't, I haven't done one of these in like a long time. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to get in front of the camera. Um, I've got, I've got projects over in the garage. I'm, I'm trying to finish up and I'm just going to dirty up this door and make some dents. Um, actually what I got to remember is this falling glass that's in this uh coming off of this lamp <clears throat> yeah i didn't know anybody was i didn't know anybody was here because it says top chat is zero but there you are so i appreciate you show i appreciate anybody showing up so far i've had a, a i can only imagine that they're russian bots being that uh, they all have russian names and say russian things um you know, I was thinking maybe they were a mail order bride, but yeah, um, I've actually on this first page zoomed in so that you can see uh, some tech on this. It's the odd thing that's happening here with this um, concept is that it's um, it's growing, and I don't want to say that it's changing, but it is. It's it's maturing. Hail hey, the Russian bots! Yeah, <laughs> it's maturing in um, 
in ways where uh, I can actually implement some of the ideas before it goes so far that I can't, I can't change something back or I have to rewrite something or retcon something. Um, but uh, for instance, I was thinking that some of the uh, hardware on the inside of the helmet might be like Google Glasses. Um, but I have not gotten so far to actually lay that down in stone uh, before I saw something like an Oculus. And then I'm like, well, my tech guy who's working on this helmet um, is going to be able to, he's going to be that guy that's on the cutting edge that gets everything new before it comes out because he just knows a guy that knows a guy. And, um, and that's what I decided I was going to do there. Um, but then uh, when I'm thinking of that stuff, I'm thinking of like all the times I was looking at the official handbook of the Marvel Universe and uh, and and kind of pouring over the way that they diagrammed out, uh, you know, Iron Man's suit or Spider-Man's web shooters, you know, and they just had like a little di diagram and and figured all that stuff out. So I still have that going on in my head um, whenever uh, whenever I'm thinking of this stuff. Right now, I'm safe. Everything's on the outside. And um, uh, I mean, we're looking at everything from the outside and. And I haven't gotten so far into the story that I need to explain any of those, any of those details. Although I do, you know, I do look forward to it because I think, you know, it's like when you think, you know, you got a good idea, you want to be able to, uh, um, you know, tell it. It's, uh, you know, here, how, what do you think of this is awesome. I'm going to tell you all about it. But uh, so what have you guys all been up to? Is there a certain... Yeah. Man, I didn't get home from work until 2 o'clock, and then uh, my camera ended up taking a huge shit um, at the very beginning of this thing. I had to reboot the computer twice. But, um, I mean, that's what I get for having a 2008 uh, Mac. I'm going to have to um, figure out exactly what it is um, that my wife really wants uh, material wise. And then I'll say like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. If when I go to buy another computer, we don't talk about it. Uh, that's going to be important. Um, yeah. We don't want to, we don't want to discuss those things that don't need to be discussed. I should get a wire coming out of the back of this thing. Yeah, uh, tell me about it. Um, I don't know how long you've been there listening. If you've been if you've been listening to me complain about the art that I have to do versus the art that I want to do. When you say you're, yeah, okay. Uh, man, who's just was it? Was a replicator? I was talking about that that earlier. You guys are experiencing some serious heat over there. Um, yeah, it's our winter. And it's not even really that cold yet over here. But um, uh, Pennsylvania, especially Western Pennsylvania, usually has the you know winters are are mild because of um, just where we are. Our, our geographic location is a little bit unique with the mountains and stuff in the way. Oh, okay. Last ten minutes or so. Well, you want me to go back and start over? <laughs> you can hear me uh, cuss and swear about how the camera's not working or wasn't working. Pain in the arse. Yeah, I was getting into the nitty gritty of the uh, of uh, the, the, what I've decided to go with uh, as far as a, a, a real identity here. This is uh, Shane McCabe. 
um, I was going to go with something that was a little bit more personal as um, our, my family um, is related to um, but when we our family going back into uh, England, I believe it is a northern England. And when you get into northern England, you know, a lot of Scottish families and, and um, a, tr a trusted uh, family to a um, to a Scot is called a sept so it becomes part of your uh, family identity so the webster family is a sept to the clan mcpherson and uh, i was going to use that but then i felt like it was too much of a self insert so i'm going with uh, shane uh mccabe just because it just i like the way it just goes uh um i don't know it just rolls off better and you know it's a little bit more it sounds a little bit more common late summer yeah uh yeah you know i think a lot of people who are especially into their um the earth is dying crap um forget that the earth is actually not just on an angle but it's also on a wobble you know the the way that uh, the way that it rotates. It's on a little bit of um. If, if you've ever seen what a top looks like when it's winding down, that uh, the Earth actually has a little bit of that. And every you know decade or so, things switch up to where they get colder than usual here and hotter than usual there. Colder than usual here and hotter than usual there. And um, it's. I mean, it's it's fairly regular. But that's where you get, like, in the 70s, people are saying that the Earth is going to freeze. And then in the 90s, people are talking about global warming. And then they <clears throat> realize they're full of shit and have to call it climate change. And that's basically what you just got. This year's the, the ass end of the wobble, or the ass end of the stick that is the wobble. Um, you know, like... Western Pennsylvania, we get some odd. I don't want to say. It, 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 I mean, it, it's it's not odd. It's just it's un it's it's unpredictable but rare. In fact, um, a lot of people who are here are here uh, who live here live here because that we don't get the extremes. You know, we have a couple of muggy days in the summer if it's really hot. We don't necessarily have a heat wave. We'll have like you know at the most a week of it and then it'll be just be like a regular summer uh, the last blizzard we had we've had heavy snows but the last blizzard we had was in a march of uh 93 um there was a flood in 05 uh, that's because uh when hurricane ivan came up the coast it came inland a little bit and then just kind of the, the ass end of that hurricane just kind of sat there and rained all over Pittsburgh. Um, what am I missing here? This boot. I don't know what to do with this boot. I think I just want to put some shadow over here. Um, yeah, cast a shadow from this guy's hand. Uh, and then uh, we do not get tornadoes because what we, we get are hills. Uh, we have hills and mountains, and that geography tends to keep things like that from happening. That's why when you get tornadoes and hurricanes, you get them across air. Well, hurricanes off of the ocean. Uh, tornadoes, you get them off of flat land where there's nothing for um, – there's nothing to stop them. You know, trailer park's not going to do that. But when you start to get into the Appalachians, which, you know, come in through uh, you know, Kentucky and uh, Pennsylvania – and over into New Jersey, that the land is so oddly hills and stuff like that everywhere that, you know, I'll never get tornadoes. But we did get one in 96 to touch right down in the middle of downtown, right in the middle of a freaking baseball game. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the, uh, I agree that people using current events as evidence are full of it. Yes, that's pretty good. You misspelled shit uh, and don't really understand uh, the real claims. Yeah, there's no, um, th there's, I remember, where did I, who, who said it was um, most people's sense of history 
um, begins and ends with how long they've been around, not stuff that happened uh, before them. Um, that, that people can they they tend to be um, accidentally arrogant that way, and um, it's a real you know like I think just stop for a second and think of, you know stuff like this has happened before. The one that really gets me that I really don't like is what was my skinny one. Skinny, but not too skinny, um, is uh, uh, people who think they're smarter than the last generation because they have better devices. And this is actually a thing. Um, you know, with that whole term, like you know, somebody will um, say something disparaging about being a boomer. I mean, I'll use that on myself, even though I'm not. I'm like front lines of the Gen X. Um, I was alive when TV was TV, but you still had to get up and change the channel and there was four or five of them. <laughs> um, the, and, but what they, they don't realize is that uh, the human condition is something that has been with us forever and is always going to be with us and that uh, they are just as susceptible to it as, as anybody else. Um, there's no such thing as a human being uh, 2.0. Um, anybody can be conned face to face. They can be conned with a, a chain letter, or they can be conned with an email, or they can be conned with a Twitter or a Telegram post. Yeah, pollution is bad. I think the, most of the Western countries are better at cleaning that stuff up uh than than not um you know like when you're getting into the what is it like the, the paris climate accords or something like that and in and, and you see that the countries that are the most like the the most egregious offenders of pollution aren't at the conference <clears throat> um although i have i i I can't necessarily agree with the idea that um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I look at Google Earth and I back out um, until I like see the whole planet and like how many you know clicks does it take to get in so that you can see something that's like your house that is, um, you know, so small. And even some of the, you know, the biggest, um, you know, the, the biggest construction complexes, um, you know, if you want to say like, you know, corporate, even chemical plants and things like that seem to take up such a small footprint in comparison to everything else. And I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, we can just, you know, throw our throw our trash out and suffer no consequences. I'm not saying that we should be dirty, um, but I don't know that we need to be as worried as. Like, yeah, don't be a slob, you know, clean up. Um, you know, because it just, you know, it's the same reason why you want to make your bed in the morning. It just looks nice. Um, you know, it's part of being, you know, part of being civilized and, you know, being clean. Why do you wash your dishes? <clears throat> you wash your dishes so that you don't get sick the next time you go to use them because you let some bacteria or something like that grow on them. Um, you don't, you know, and, and it's the same reason why do you want to, uh, you know, clean the planet, you know, because it's gonna, it's gonna make you sick if you don't. Uh, I mean, it sounds a little self-serving. Um, I just don't think that something that we didn't create is possible for us to destroy. I think it, I think it's, I think it's a little arrogant to assume that something like that can happen. I'll, although, I mean, I, I, but I don't mean that in, you know. I don't want to say like when you call somebody arrogant, I think it's it's there's a nicer way to put it. I think it's an assumption um, that that we're bigger than we think we are. Um, the pollution's going to get us. I don't think it's going to get the planet. For instance. Um, we still we we still have to beat back all the weeds and the grass on the side of the highway 
you know, I mean, if if we were all of a sudden, you know, not here or just decided not to, you know, drive around for a while. Real-time emissions from countries. China looked uninhabitable. Dark red. Well, yeah, man, you can't even see across the street. Um, yeah, China is dirty. Um, there's a... There's a lot of people over there that need energy, and I honestly don't think that the Chinese, you know, I mean, look at what happened in, uh, you know, Chernobyl. You know, that was that was dirty too. Um, and I guess, well, let's. I'm not. I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying don't pollute. I'm just saying I th think it's. I think we should have a, a better, a better perspective or, or proportion of, um, of what the experience really is. Um, I don't think we should like, what was that, uh, that one movie with John Travolta, James Gandolfini, Robert Duvall, a class action. And that was about a, uh, you know, a tannery that was drunk, dumping stuff in the, uh, in the river, you know, so many harsh chemicals that it actually made this little Creek flammable. You know, no, you cannot do that. Um, I mean, I'm aware of this stuff, too. Um, you have to, you know, you can't just dump paint um, and, uh, and uh, you know, dump it in the, you know, dump it in the river. You know, you have to, there's places that you take it. Um, there is equipment that you have to have to get rid of it where, um, you know, you, you dump your old paint in this, in this bucket or whatever, and it turns it into a solid block of urethane. Um, that's one of the reasons why the, the automotive refinishing industry is going and, and they're using a waterborne urethanes instead of solvent based paint because of the, the uh, volatile chemicals that, that make it up. And, uh, uh, in some ways it's good. In some ways it's bad. Uh, you have to actually wear a more protective suit, a, a, a greater protective suit to spray the waterborne urethanes because they stick to you. The paint molecules stick to you better than they stick to the car. So, you know, there's a, you know, there's a sacrifice for you. They're, they're, they're shit to paint with. I mean, if you're doing artwork, um, they still sell, you know, the solvent based stuff, which is what I, uh, which is what I use. But yeah, when you get rid of it, you have to, you know, deal with a company who is, that's the whole reason why they exist is so that they can get rid of your old paint. Um, you know, and I get it. You know, the e that's one of the reasons why I don't want to do it anymore. You know, EPA is, you know, the, the EPA is not going to come at me and ask me what's in my pen here. Um, but they are going to make sure that I've got the right charcoal filters on my, on, on the fan of my, you know, spray booth. Um, you know, when you do automotive painting and stuff like that, you have to have, unless you're grandfathered in, you have to have, uh, a, a special permits and zoning to be able to do that light industrial. You can't do that in a residential neighborhood. Uh, yeah, in fact, it's odd. Um, I grew up in Buffalo, and um, you want a, a you want a really good uh, story, uh, a little piece of history about Western New York, <clears throat> and uh, in Niagara Falls. Uh, look up a little town called Love Canal, L U V, Canal. Um, yeah, you know, those people were 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 being poisoned. Uh, by a hooker chemical company. Um, in fact, apparently this shit's following me around everywhere. There's a there's a place, uh, there's a town uh, not too far away uh, from, well, it's actually the, the town that I live in. I'm like doxing myself, whatever. Um, but uh, decades ago, we were... Um, very, um, very central to working with the radioactive material that went into building the, the atomic bomb and Madame Curie and all that stuff. <clears throat> Not Madame Curie. Who am I thinking of? 
that I'm thinking of? Anyways, um, when you drive around this part of the town, yeah, no, L-U-V, not L-O-V-E. Yeah, I get it, though. That's that's funny. <laughs> it's L-U-V Canal. Um, but uh, if you look up one of the dirtiest cities in the uh, in the country, what used to be one of the dirtiest cities in the country, you'll come up with Cannonsburg, uh, PA. Um, when you go through town, I can actually see this on the way to work. There is a place that is just an empty field with a chain link fence around it. And it's got that. Okay. Um, when you play Call of Duty on any one of those maps and you go too far to the outside of it and, uh, and, and you get into those like radioactive fields, it's those signs. <laughs> um, but for a long time, and I mean, and, you know, just like a, a generation or two ago, you know, there were kids that were out there playing and this field, which right underneath it was buried, um, nuclear shit. And, uh, you know, the government had to come in and, and, and clean it up. Um, and we do have a higher than usual, uh, higher than usual instance of, uh, you know, people getting and dying of cancer. Uh, I did not know that at the time I, you know, moved into this place. Of course, I'm not, I don't live like right next to it. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a couple of, I'm a couple of highway exits away. Uh, but yeah, I look up dirty Cannonsburg and then I look up Love Canal. It's you know, I don't know if, if it's just if it's just me or uh, if I'm that unlucky or if every every town has something like that going on. I mean, what is it? Uh, what's you know, what's the big pollution thing in New York? It's I mean, there's got to be a ton of stuff in New York City, but at the same time, nothing tastes as good as a New York hot dog because of all the minerals in the water. Or whatever's in the water there. That's what I. That's what I heard. When you get a hot dog from a hot dog vendor in uh, New York, it's supposed to be really, really good because of uh, the water that they get cooked in. I don't know what I'm doing with this face. I'm just. Uh, I'm just cross hatching for the sake of cross hatching right now. Um, here's a good one. Um, everywhere, um, where there's a water treatment plant. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Niagara Falls, Love Canal. That's one thing, but there's a lot of chemical companies up there. Um, I'm, I'm, I, this is not exclusively the reason, but when you get in, uh, into Niagara Falls, um, all you, you can actually go in and see all those, you know, and they've been updated, of course, over the years. But um, all those Tesla turbines, which creates all the electricity, you know, the electric company up there is called Niagara Mohawk. And um, but that's, you know, all the water that's going over the falls, that's turning those turbines, it's making all that electricity. Um, but there are chemical companies up there. And um, there's hooker chemical, oxy chemical, at least when I was growing up, that's, that's what was up there. And that was all on the, um, the American side. Um, I don't know if that's how it is on the Canadian side, but when you get into Niagara Falls, New York on the American side, you can actually, it's, it smells bad. Um, you know, I, it's, it just, it's, it's got a, I don't know if it's the same now. It's been a while since I've been up there, but there is a special stink uh, to the city of Niagara Falls, New York. It's um, and it, it's really too bad because everything else about that area is so beautiful. Um, and it doesn't smell like that when you're in the falls, but when you're going through the town of of Niagara Falls, um, it's uh, it's really it's something else. Undes indescribable. I, I, I really, there's, there's no way to, uh, it doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell like anything natural. That's for sure.
I don't know, I might be uh, overworking this thing. I don't want to do that. So we gotta be at like we gotta be like four o'clock, right? Yeah, four o five. Man, Jason, uh, I tell you, Jason, and I know Latin Patriot was up here before. She's I I gotta keep my eyes on the phone. It's one of the reasons why I had it sitting here. But um, I do appreciate you showing up. I don't know even know what time it is over there. Over here, it's it's four a.m. Um, and um, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> So um, I do appreciate you showing up. I'm glad I got to talk to somebody while I was doing this. And I'm and 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 thanks for recognizing what was going on on this. Uh, what's going on on this page too? That means a lot. Um, hopefully, I can get more work done on this thing as I let these other projects go. Um, but uh, man, be careful out there in uh, New Zealand, man. Keep that. Try to hold on to uh, try, try to hold on to your freedom for as long as you can. On the news that we get about that place uh, over there, um, it's um, it's 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 frightening. But um, I tell you what, 10 p.m. in the future, yeah, no kidding. Um, what was the coolest thing that I saw come out of New Zealand lately? Was that uh, what we do in the shadows? I fucking love that show, man. I love that movie. That was such a that was such a work of genius. I know that that whole thing was filmed in New Zealand, I think, right? It's just amazing that it only takes that long for the signal to get from Pittsburgh all the way over to Aus, not Aus, New Zealand. I wonder, is it is, is it terribly offensive to mix that up? Uh, Prime Minister Trumpian way of not saying things the best way. Oh, good. Yeah, it's good, 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 good. We don't wear them anymore either. Um, I think um, the kids still do when they get on the school bus because that's a federal thing. And um, but our school district here is actually pretty good. I know we're we're not the type of school district that is a Virginia, a uh, what was it, a Loudon? It's not. It's not a Loudon County style. You know. Uh, trying to dump as much wokeness down the kids. Yeah, dude, seriously, like you, you got to let this thing run its course. It's it, it was a, it was the simplest thing in the world. You you let it run its course, take care of the uh, old, old people, um, and let the natural immunity do its thing, and uh, for crying out loud. Uh, capitalism without morals is just one of the worst things in the world. I mean, I love capitalism, but you got to have integrity. You can't just do this. You can't sue us if something goes wrong and release a vaccine uh, Windows 95 style. Um, yeah, Australia's, Aust Australia is... Is just is just weird. Now, I mean, <clears throat> that landmass is basically as big as the United States... But um, it's all like around the coast, the north and the south and stuff like that. When I was asking Bancroft what was going on over there, because I just see, see, you know, not having any idea, uh, you know, you know, what province is where and whatever. But um, that some of the some of the cities are so corrupt. Huh. Well, you, when you say lock down houses or lock your borders down, because we can't even do that um, from Mexico, for crying out loud. I can see, like, locking the country off from other countries. Yeah, but once you open back up again, doesn't that... 
but once you once you open back up doesn't that mean that uh you know, if the virus is still out there, you're still going to be susceptible to it, right? Then one person gets it, and then it spreads, and and all that. Man, I don't know. I mean, if it's if it works, then that's that that's awesome. But um, I just think it's you know we we can't we just we can't keep hiding people's faces um you know we're it's it's not good it's it's not good for for communication for crying out loud i mean you know you gotta be you, you know you gotta be able to see the person that you're talking to so you can get an accurate you know response i mean yeah 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 okay oh so this mostly the shops Hey man, look if it works, then that's uh, then that's great. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a little that's a little too author uh, authoritarian. I can't talk. That's over the that's over the top. Um, I mean that's that's the scary part. Hey, then when just one more question, and then I really it's probably going to open up an entire other thing, but I do need to um, I do need to bail. When Australia did that um, that thing with where they they got rid of all their guns, and I'm sure it's not as extreme um, as that. There's uh, I'm sure there's more nuance to the whole you know Australian gun thing. Um, did did you guys follow suit in in New Zealand? Um, does what one country does? Yeah, um, is it is it like uh, Canada and America, where thing where where the two countries by and large are generally alike, except for most stuff? But um, is is it like that with New Zealand and Australia, or is it because, or are you, you are both countries vastly different from one another? So like you think New Zealand has said things that others have said, but we're not doing the same. So they're like, yeah, yeah, us too. Go away. <laughs> uh, optional, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, um, I wasn't necessarily raising a target shooting family. I had a little uh, squirrel gun when I was 12, which um, I have since my son owns it. I painted it first, you know, it's, it doesn't look like a squirrel gun anymore. Um, but I have, I have collected some since then, some handguns and rifles. Um, we didn't know we had them. Oh, uh, so buybacks of "quote unquote" assault weapons. Yeah. I need to get out and uh, and, and get some uh, get some squirrel. I've heard that's just really good stuff. I was uh, pinstriping a beach bike for a, a guy who happened to be a chef, 
And that's what he was saying goes, it's, you know, it's a lot of work because it's not a lot of meat on each one of those uh, things, but he goes really worth it. You know, think about it. They just sit around and eat nuts all day. And that, that, then that flavor gets into the meat. And I was like, man, I got to go get myself some and, uh, and, and try that out. But it is now, what would I have to stop doing? Everything. <laughs> Yeah, not open carry, walking around the streets with them. Police aren't armed. Okay. So they're uh, more akin to uh, bobbies, I guess, like in uh, like in Great Britain. Yeah, like they're not going to, um, they're not going to strap up unless they got to take down a door. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, what are we at? Like 370 million ish, give or take. And uh, Canada is uh, 30 million. Probably more than that, but um, yeah, 370 million. Of course, they've got all the um, semi inhabitable land up there. You want a harsh winter. <clears throat> Canada's where you go to find it. That shape just isn't working. I just need to fill all this in. Yeah. Okay. So um, if I'm watching a, um, what was I watching? It was a Tony Ja movie. But since Australia is close enough to the, um, um, I don't want to say South Pacific, but um, like Siam and, and all that. And in like in New Zealand, you have a, a mix of um, you have a mix of South Pacific or um, what do they call it? Samoan. Doesn't that all does the, those ethnic groups mix in there, too? Because I get that dude that directed uh, what we do in the shadows, and I can't remember his name. I need to Jojo Rabbit too. It's just it's a uh, Taiti Tai Tai uh, so what what Tiki what Kiki. Um, doesn't that isn't doesn't that make up a a a, a decent portion of your of your population? Okay. Uh, automatically citizen. So would that be like, um, I don't want to say like, would that be like first, well, they call it first nation in Canada and here, um, um, Native Americans, although the Native American history with the United States is a little bit, it's not the most desirable, desirable part of our history. I can tell you that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like a, um, like the U S Virgin islands or what the Falkland islands are to great Britain, although it's not a, uh, something conquered, I guess that's, that was a, they're, they're Aboriginal. Is that what you're saying? Or no, they're um yeah the outer outer lying islands. They're um they fall under your protection like um you're responsible for them, but they're not an uh they're not they they New Zealand has Maori unlike everywhere else. Ah, 
Ah, okay, I got gotcha. you. Are those the, the are those the dudes doing the 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 cool dance and stuff before they play rugby? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, man. It's it's getting late, but I did. What was they were in? Um, uh, they wear the black uniforms. Like rug, rugby is a big deal over there, isn't it? Mao Zedong, re like re, Maori, Maori. Like if you were had a Pittsburgh accent and you were trying to say Mallory, you would just say Maori. <laughs> that is literally how they talk uh, talk down here. Yeah, yep, that's cool. That's cool. Jason, I, I I I love talking about this stuff seriously. And the next time I get on, hopefully it'll be it'll, it'll be a little bit earlier. We can keep going, but um, I gotta hit it. I'm gonna um, go uh, uh, brush my teeth and try to remember all the other stuff I'm supposed to do before bed. Thanks for hanging out, man. I really appreciate it. Um, you have I'm gonna I'm gonna do you have a channel? I should be on that already if I'm not. Okay. Yeah, make some noise next time. Um, yeah, I got it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like I, I got up on Twitter. I, I, I was like, I, I might do a draw stream when I was at work. And then I get off at 1.30, get here at 2. I have to reboot this damn thing twice. And by then I was like, all right. But yeah, I'll um, I'll, I'll uh, make sure you're in the, the group that I sent the link to. And uh, I'll take care of it. I'm trying to get better at this stuff. So, uh, um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll make sure that uh, I'll make sure that I get you in there in a direct message. And uh, let me see if I can do that as a reminder right now. Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah. Come on. there so at least that way you'll be in the message list all right thanks man i'm gonna shut this thing down brush my teeth and um uh you enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> since it is day enjoy your uh your your friday thursday uh, um take it easy my friend and uh i'll check you later <laughs>